Oh, hi there. I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your world, into your home, into your space. And um, yeah, well, thank you for passing through. I talk about a lot of different things, so you're welcome to like, put your thumbs down, subscribe, share, whatever you feel like doing. Today I thought I would talk about friendships because people take friendship for granted. A lot of people take friendship for granted. It's not like the olden days, you know. I always talk about the olden days, but it's not like the time when you used to buck up on people, you start chat and then you got to know somebody and it would grow and you would naturally um, have a relationship. You know, it would just kind of evolve naturally. It doesn't happen like that anymore. We build up too much walls. There's too much reservations. We've had so much moments of distrust. There's too much things going on in the media. So when you're thinking about friendship and even relationships, there's this big wall that goes up and prevents us from really getting to know someone. Because we've always got these barriers that say, what if... I don't know, can I trust that person, blah, blah, blah. Well, what I want to talk about is that even if you do meet somebody, you know, whether it's a male or a female, whether it's a friend or a romantic partner, you need to know that you're not going to get everything in one person. They have something, um, and that is what's caused a lot of discord in relationships, because I think people meet male or females and they think that that person has to have everything that they want and because of that if they if they're missing in one of those elements they they push that person to one side that's not what relationships are about what you can't get in one person you can get in someone else that doesn't mean you have to be unfaithful or anything like that it does mean that you have different friends for different reasons i think i saying that I think I said that before anyway I was reading this um, book about purpose-filled life as I'm telling you and I thought I would take out some of the elements it's actually um, it's got to do with God um, your purpose being for God but I decided to take out um, because they say God is love, okay? So I thought, I'll take God out of the equation, and if I put, um, instead of putting God, I put the partner or the friend, it still applies. The way you would treat, the way you would behave in a, that circumstance is the same way you should behave if you're dealing with friends or partners. So what I came out with, I took out key, key um, parts out of it, and you're going to be looking for the following qualities in a friend or a mate or anybody who's important for you. And like I said, it, you're not going to get all these qualities in one person. If you do, whoa, you've hit the jackpot. That's probably your soulmate. But we're not all that fortunate to meet our soulmates. And if you haven't met your soulmate, it doesn't mean that the person you're with is wrong. And if you haven't met that person yet, at least you can look for the qualities that you that are important to you. OK, the first one is an inspirer. You need to be around somebody who inspires you, who encourages you. You don't want to be around somebody who puts you down, who has these little digs and then say, oh, I was only joking. You don't want somebody like that. You have people like that. They make out like they're your friends. They make out like they've got your back. And every now and then they give you a little dig. And you end up questioning yourself. Am I too sensitive? Am I being oversensitive here? No, you're not. Anything that makes you feel uncomfortable means that it makes you feel uncomfortable. Don't try to justify it. Don't wash it off. Don't minimise it. So you want somebody who's going to encourage you to lift your spirits we are all responsible for our own moods, but when you've got somebody, regardless of your mood, that can make you laugh, make you smile, that's good. Regardless, I mean, sometimes people put stuff on Facebook, you know, inspirational messages, even if that makes you smile, that's okay. You know, they don't even have to be human beings in your space. Anything that makes you smile, anything that encourages you, keep that in your space. Nurture that. Second thing is respect. You need somebody who you respect and somebody who respects you. Sometimes you can be around people and they're cursing. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm a prude. Yeah, I do um, 
I do tolerate cursing. And on the occasional times when I'm really, 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 really mad, I will cuss a bad word. But ordinarily, I don't curse. And so sometimes, but I cannot assume that somebody who curses is disrespecting me. I just, because that's just how some people are. But if you feel disrespected, that is the difference. If you feel disrespected by the way somebody is talking to you or behaving, then that is where you kind of say, well, no, I don't feel comfortable with that person. And that person gets in the minus heat, put that person to that side. So you need somebody who, who, you, who respects you in the way you want to be respected. And everybody um, wants to be respected differently. And then and also you need to find out how that person wants to be respected. Because I remember when I was looking at, when I was um, going to see a client and we had this kind of an agreement before we started the session. And I said to him, you know, what, what, what do you expect from me? What are your boundaries? What don't you like? Um, is there a way I could offend you? Is there anything? And he's going, oh, no, it's all right. It's all right. I said, well, for me personally, I need you to show up on time and I need you to call me if you're running late. That's all I need. That is how he'll show me respect because if he doesn't show up on time and he doesn't call me, to me, that's he's disregarding my time and he's disregarding me. So that's how I would put those boundaries in place. So it might be different for someone else. Somebody might not care if somebody turns up late. If it's not an appointment with a client and it's just a friend, as long as they call me and say, look, I'm running late, but I've learned not to stress about that anymore. But I'm just giving that as an example. OK, critique. You need someone who's going to critique you. You can't have somebody who's always giving you compliments. You need somebody who makes you do better, who, you know, motivates you to do better. And you don't take critique personally. And I mean, to be honest, it all depends the way it's said. I mean, some people are downright rude. I'm not talking about that. But if somebody says, you know, I think you should um, do this way, this this would look better, or um, you need to do it this way um, because it will come over much better. Well, critique like feedback, you know, providing it's constructive, you take that on board. You need people like that in your space. Okay, and then you can evaluate what they're saying. Sorry, if they're what they're saying makes sense and you can say, yeah, yeah, I can apply that to myself, then all well and good. If you think it's coming from a negative place, you can kind of think, oh, well, I'm not going to take that on board. But just make sure you examine um, yourself and your reasons for rejecting the feedback. Make sure it's not coming from a place of insecurity or vulnerability. Okay, okay, accept her. You, want, you need somebody who accepts you. For all your, with all your warts, for everything, if you're the type of person that gets into a tantrum, that they don't take it personally, that they can either, not, you don't want somebody, if you're in a tantrum, they get in a tantrum, because that's not going to work. But you need somebody, if you're in a tantrum, they're going to calm you down. Or, you know, whatever it is that your frailties then, whatever your frailties are, that that person accepts them, because no one is perfect. No one is perfect. So you need somebody who's going to accept you. Um, what else? We need somebody who's forgiving. We all make mistakes. But you have some people, you make one mistake and they're gone. You know? That's not the way it works. You talk through things that you've got that have gone wrong. Um, if, they're, if they're minor dis mis dis misdemeanors, you can either think, well, okay. You know, you can talk it through, why it happened, blah, blah, blah. If it's gross misdemeanors, then you can say, well, look, you can still talk it through, but you say to that person, look, I really, um, this is something that's really affected me badly. I don't think I can get past this point. And so but you talk it through. You don't have to give rant and rave and get cross up and, you know, angry and boof, boof, you know, all that kind of stuff. None of that is necessary. Somebody does hurts you or does something wrong. You can either talk about it. If you feel too emotional to talk about it, you say, look, I'm, I'm leaving and I'll come back to you when I've calmed down. And you don't come back with a ratchet or a gun. You just you just wait till you calm down and you talk it through. If you don't feel like talking it through and it's one of those things, you can send a text message because that person will know what they've done and they'll know whether or not it's forgivable or not. And what might be forgivable for one person is not necessarily forgivable for another. So you have to bear that in mind. 
Okay, you need somebody who's going to protect you, somebody who's got your back, not somebody who's going to be snitching behind your back and, you know, telling people your business and, and stuff like that. You want somebody who's got you on site. Somebody, when they see something um, that's going to hurt you or might, you know, might damage your reputation or something, they're going to kind of advise you or, you know, well, just basically they've got your back. Um, approachable. You need somebody in your space, and I'm not talking about one person, I'm talking about these people that you need in your space in order to bring you to a certain level, to raise you up a level, or maybe even two or three notches. Um, somebody who's approachable, somebody, you know, if that, especially if it's a partner, they need to be approachable. You'd be surprised how many people are in relationships and they're, he they're skeptical about approaching their partners because they're not quite sure how that partner's going to react. And what happens? Deceit. So you need somebody who's approachable. So if you're um, on the on your voyage of meeting someone new, just make sure you feel comfortable about talking about anything with that partner. Watch their reactions. They're kind of because I was watching Love Island the other day, and this girl said, um, "What did she say?" Anyway, she had this sex fetish, and the man already started judging her and jumping to conclusions, and she is this and she is that. You don't want somebody who cannot, you know, who's not open-minded, who's not necessarily judgmental because you don't know why that person likes the things she likes or why he likes the things he likes. You just don't know. But you can kind of find out, be interested in people. Even if you don't want that person as a partner and you just, that person could be a friend, that person could still teach you something. They could teach you anything. Everybody can teach somebody something. So you might not want that person as a partner, but they might have qualities in them that would be beneficial for you down the line. Compromise. You need somebody who's going to compromise, somebody who's not going to say, look, I'm not doing that. Or you have to take this. I'm not changing. You need somebody who's going to meet you halfway and say, look, you know, I like this and I know you don't like it. So therefore, let's do this. Compromise. Transparency. You don't want some. You want somebody who's open, clear, concise. Not somebody who tries to go around corners. Um, trustworthy. Trustworthy is such a big thing. Like they say, it takes years to build up trust and only a second to break it down. So trustworthy, that's about being reliable. You know, people don't realise that when they're not reliable, that breaks down trust. If somebody says, look, I'm going to come up and see you, and then they don't come and they don't call, and then they call up maybe a couple of days later and say, oh, I'm really sorry, you know, this happened or that happened. In your head, you're going to be thinking, OK, is that a plausible reason? OK, and you might even say, OK, give them the benefit of the doubt. And then they do it again. Then you're going to think, no, that person is unreliable. It's not somebody I want in my space because you don't want somebody who says they're going to come up. You're, you're there planning and doing whatever it is you do for guests and then they don't show. That just shows them that they're wasting your time. They don't respect your time. Good communicator. They need to be able to communicate, communicate their needs. They need to be able to tell you what they don't like, what hurts them, what makes them angry. And you need to watch those, those um, kind of expressions when you're talking to them, when you're listening, what kind of things rile them up. Is it valid what riles them up? Do you think that something that something do you think that is something that would rile you up? And if it's not, do you think that person is the type of person who overreacts to certain situations? Is that somebody you feel you can take out somewhere and you don't feel embarrassed? You don't want to get um, turned off because they overreact all the time. So these are the little things that you're looking out for to make sure that the person in your life is going to be as supportive as possible. Um, and also, you need to be a good listener, like I said, and they, you have to have somebody who's willing to listen to you. Somebody with a good attitude. A good attitude can take you miles. And a good attitude, you can go anywhere. You can be in any social arena. You can feel proud and the person is representing you in a certain way and you're representing them. So a good attitude, courtesy, manners takes you a long way. Um, yeah, similar values. I think that's really important. You know, the same values about family, the same values about who you, what you believe in and honesty, work.
that kind of thing. Raising children, all things like that is really, really important. Now, this might seem like a lot of qualities, but it's not really. You know, when they do these jokes and they say, oh, women want this long, 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 long list and men only want three things. It's not that it's a long, 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 long list. Because those characteristics will be in anyone who is reliable, respectful and considerate. I'm, I'm itemising them because for some reason, some people are just not considerate. They're not respectful and they're not honest. And so we should really and truly, you shouldn't have to itemise all of those traits, all those qualities. Because if somebody is genuine and they are considerate, you wouldn't have to worry about all of those things because if you're considerate, you're not going to keep somebody waiting. You're not going to not call them if you can't make it. If you're respectful, you're not going to be um, treating them disrespect, well, treating them disrespectfully. You know, cussing them or whatever it is you might do that's disrespectful to different people. And you're not going to be telling lies, stupid lies. As adults, I don't understand. As adults, you can't be beaten. No linaga beat you. Unless you're with an abuser. So why lie? You know, people say they lie because, you know, they don't want to um, hurt someone. Well, if you don't want to hurt somebody, why you do it in the first place? So it defeats the object. Don't, you know, don't do something and then you, you that you know is going to hurt somebody. And then you lie to protect that person. It doesn't make no sense. That's stupidness. Anyway, um, maintain yourself in the relationship. Don't lose yourself in the relationship. That's very important because a lot of people, once they get a relationship, then get so excited, then forget about everybody. And they put 110% in the relationship. The man gets peed off or the woman gets peed off because it's overkill. And then, you know, two twos, then, you know, they each go on their own way. So, you know, you still need to maintain yourself, still maintain your life. What you used to do before, you discuss, you know, you discuss with each other what, um, what it is that you want and they discuss what it is that they want, but you manage to maintain your life and you respect each other's boundaries. Because um, we all have things that we love doing regardless of not you have a partner you have some people when they are in a relationship they put everything that they've done on hold and that's not good so that person has to be able to be um, accommodate you and everything about you and set boundaries you know you don't want somebody who's um overstepping boundaries whatever those boundaries are they're different for every different for everybody and especially with regard to relationships continually all the time throughout the day think about something nice about your friend or your partner he's nice I really like him because of this I really like the way he did that I really like the way she did that I love going home to her at night you keep like a mantra you 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 repeat positive affirmations about your friend or your partner um, it was nice for him to do that. You know, he makes me feel good when he does that. I loved it when, you know what I mean? Throughout the day, continually um, repeat nice, good affirmations about your friend or your partner. You'd be surprised the difference it makes. Um, get to know them, ask questions, um, listen keenly, watch body language, um, take a mental note if they if you feel that they're withholding. Uh, if they feel uncomfortable, don't say, oh, why aren't you saying that? Why aren't you telling me that? Some people are just not ready to tell you things at certain times. Whatever they're willing to disclose, that's enough for that period of time. Don't push people to disclose more than what they're prepared to at that particular time. Um, and make sure, this might be a silly one, but make sure that the person that you're pursuing or that you're interested in is interested in you. A lot of people... They, they, they kind of follow people or they ring them and they run them down. The person ain't even interested. A person can make out that they're interested, but they're not really. People get with people for different reasons. It could be for money. It could be for companionship. It could be somebody to buy them clothes. It could be somebody to drive them around. It, some people are even looking for somewhere to live. Or maybe it's just a booty call. But you need to know that somebody's interested in you. And they're not, it's not what they need from you because that's not going to sustain the friendship. Because if they can't get what it is that they've come into the relationship for, they're gone. 
So make sure that you know that they're interested in you and you'll be able to tell if they're interested in you. Because like I say, respect, consideration and honesty. That shows you that somebody cares. Um, and once you find somebody who's interested in you and you see the qualities above, you select which qualities are important for you as an individual. And then all you've got to do is value your relationship. And that's all for now. I've changed my surroundings because I'm doing something, you know, temporarily. So no lovely yellow walls and all that kind of stuff. But that's all for now. And also, I've noticed that the, um, the imagery or whatever, for some reason in this room, it's not very nice. I'm not quite sure why that is. Maybe I need a new light. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you get the message, even though I don't look so great and the room don't look so great. Bye-bye.